Having created a seating style in the previous tutorial, it's time to add a crowd. This video explores the many randomization controls available in a rail clone style to help create a varied audience. Note that to maintain compatibility with rail clone light, this example uses only two audience models. Rail clone pro users can use an unlimited number of audience members, making repetition harder to detect. When setting up a new rail clone style, it often makes sense to use a smaller section of spline so that we can focus on the details. In this case, as in the previous tutorial, we'll use the small spline over here to make our audience. Since the audience sits on the chairs, we'll first add the chairs to this spline. So with that done, we'll now come over to Create i2 Software and create a new Rail Clone Pro object. Open the Style Editor and create a new L1S Generator, a new Segment and a new Spline object. For the spline object, pick the same spline as you're using for the chairs from the scene. And for the segment, just pick one of these characters. To help the character to align properly to the chairs, click on the segment, come down to alignment and change the Y and Z settings to pivot. To enable ourselves to position these regularly so that they sit on the chairs, connect the segment in the evenly input slot. Now you can control the distance between characters using the linear rules evenly setting and it should match the same as we set for the chairs which was 0.43. To ensure the spacing is regular from the start point and doesn't equalize the start and end gaps turn off justify. And as with the chairs because we want the alignment on the x-axis to be the same whether this is in the start input slot or an evenly, change the alignment x to left. At the moment, subsequent segments are being pushed out of alignment because of the boundary of the adjacent segment. To resolve this, change the padding right to minus one meter. This will allow adjacent segments to overlap. Now the last thing we want to do is to make sure that they're sat roughly in the middle of the seat. So having a look at one segment, go into the transform settings translation X and you'll find we can slide these around in position without changing or affecting the evenly distance. Once you've done that to one of these just clone the segment, paste it and swap it in the evenly input picking the other audience member from the scene and just double check to see if any of those settings need to be adjusted. In this case maybe the X transform a little. With those two now correct, we want to randomize between them. So add a randomize operator, plug both of those in, and plug the randomize into the evenly input. We could add slightly more variety by offering the opportunity of mirroring these on the X axis. So if we add a couple of mirror operators too, and just plug each of these in and add these to the randomize operator we end up with a few more variations so as when creating the chairs uh, the evenly won't create a segment right at the beginning in order to do that we need to take the randomize operator and plug this into the start input slot too here we go and finally we want to be able to create occasional empty seats a nice way of doing that is just to add a new segment object, but don't bother to assign any geometry from the scene to it, just leave it blank. Now plug this into the randomize operator, and you'll see that we can create the possibility of empty spaces using this segment. To change the probability of one, you need to just come in here and adjust the percentage presence of each of these. So if we wanted less segments, we'd have to turn this down to maybe 25%. Now we're going to have fewer empty seats. Likewise, if we wanted leaning forward to appear more often, maybe twice as often as the other one, we could change it to 200%. We'll leave it as it is for now. So this sort of sets up the geometry. Uh, what we want to do now to add a little bit more variety, because we only have really two models, is to randomize the material that's applied. So if we open the material editor, come down to scene materials, there should be a material called audience. See, this is a multi-sub-object material, and it has 
10 different audience skins that we can use. So if we just apply that to the rail clone object, you can see at the moment they're all taking the first skin. What we want to do is randomize the material IDs between 1 and 10 so that they all have a different texture. So do this by going to the operators and adding a new material operator, connect the randomize output to the material input, and then connect the material to the start and evenly inputs. Like so. So now we're getting some randomization, uh, but the material needs to be adjusted. So you can see at the moment it's replacing material ID 1 with a random selection from 1 to 2. All we need to do is to change the 2 value to 10. Then we get a lot more variety. And we also want the audience to only appear on the splines where the material ID is explicitly set to 1 for the spline segment. In this way we can create uh, steps and passageways up through the stadium leaving gaps. Um, so to do that go to linear 1s, go to limits and just turn on material ID and you can leave the settings as they are. You may also need to go back and do the same thing for the chair style if you want them to also leave gaps for stairs and passageways. So I'll just come in here and do the same thing for all of these. So that's our audience done. So next we're going to create the flags. There are three in the scene and we'll randomize between them, but we'll also randomize the rotation of the flags themselves. To do that, create a new Rail Clone Pro object. Go to Modify and open the Style Editor. We'll use another linear array and we'll use the same spline as we've used for the chairs and the audience. As I just mentioned, change the limits to Material ID 1. Now we'll create a new segment plug this into the evenly input and pick the first flag from the scene. While we're here let's add the material. So there is a flags material in the scene. If we just apply that to the rail clone object and close the material editor down. Now the pivot point for the flag is at the very very base and that's where it's going to rotate from. So in order for that to happen, come over to Properties, General, Alignment and change to Pivot for the X, Y and the Z. And the flags will probably go behind the characters. So let's come to the Linear Array, go to Rules and we want the Evenly Distance to match the same value that we use for the characters and for the seats. So turn off Justify and set the evenly distance to 0.43 since that what we, that's what we use for the others. Now we might find as before that the flags push each other out of alignment so to stop that happening, especially when they rotate, change the right padding to a large value like negative 3 meters. And now we can position them. So come to Transform, Fix Translation and we'll bring it forward about negative 0.5. We want it to go up, say to 0.5, and on the x-axis let's try 0.1. So they're sort of sitting roughly where their right hand would be. Obviously these characters haven't been modelled to look as though they're holding flags, so this is going to be an illusion that really works from a distance rather than up close. But that's got the flag in roughly the right place. So what we want to do now is to add some randomized rotation to it. So with the flag selected, we'll go to the randomized transform controls, which are down here, and turn those on. So turn on rotation. And this is a minimum and a maximum value. So we could, for example, go minus 15 to 20, maybe 0 to 30. And on the Z, we could go negative 180 to 180. Obviously, we can change these just by eye. until you're happy. Could also change the scale a little too if we wanted a little bit of variety in the size of them. So we could go from 80 say to 110 in all of these. And translation we don't really want to randomize. So we've got some flags there that are randomly sort of rotated and scaled. Um, and what we want to do now is to basically clone this for the other two flags. So right click, copy and paste. Do this twice. Pick the second flag from the scene for that one and the third for the final node. And then we want to randomize those just like we did the audience. So a randomize operator. Plug those in. And put the whole thing into evenly. 
and just like before we want it in the start too so we've got a lot of flags there now everyone's got one each what we want to do is just thin that out a bit and we do that the same way as we did to creating a, 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 an empty audience seat by adding a, a blank segment plugging this into the randomize operator and then changing the percentage presence for that one up to something probably quite high to really thin it out so we only get very few it doesn't look much when there's this few seats but when we apply it to the whole stadium there'll be a lot of flags even with this set to 2000% and that's it we now have a chair style we have an audience that sit neatly on them and we've got flags that roughly approximate the position of the audience's hands the last thing to do is to apply these back into the stadium itself and before we do that it's very important that we change all of the display back to point cloud so we'll change for each of these the displays back to point cloud chairs and all and then for each one come to the base objects rollout and just pick the spline from the scene called spline chairs so we've got our chairs back let's add the audience we've got a maximum number of segment warnings so we'll just change that to if we just come down to the segments here and change it to from 50,000 yeah, 50, to 60,000 should be more than enough yep and then same thing for the flags I shouldn't need to change this one we come up to base objects click on spline again last time and pick, pick the splines chairs from the scene we now have the flags in there too so in this video we looked at rail clones tools for randomizing geometry textures and transforms to create an audience for the stadium in the next tutorial, we'll complete the scene, adding an undulating roof using RailClone 2's new 2D array generator. Until then, for more training on RailClone 2, please visit our tutorials page, our Vimeo and YouTube channels, or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.